Kitten alert. Look at that kitten. It's cute. Make that kitten happy. Subscribe to my vlog. Hello and welcome. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It looks like I need a haircut. Uh, in most corners of the world, it's about 8.30 in the morning. It is the 31st day of August. We made it through August and now it is technically officially fall, even though we're in the middle of a heat wave because weather. And uh, broadcasting to you live from Site B, it's the OGGM with this week's RPG print news. The following titles should be, should be, at uh, the uh, friendly local game store of your choice. But as always, uh, call ahead to make sure they have it in, in stock or not. Uh, we will now go through to see what's coming out this week. From Frog God Games, we have Hell Comes to Bog Town and the Rat King Sewers. This is both for 5e and the OSR. These are $25 each. Uh, they are a low-level adventure set in and around Bogtown, uh, dealing with uh, corruption and rats and mysteries and bogs. Uh, interesting, though, that the Bogtown is also a town in Borrow Maze by Greg Gillespie, but uh, there's no uh, connection as far as I can see between this bog town and the borrow maze bog town other than it's an easy name to use and i don't know maybe frog god games might be trying to connect their stuff with the uh, borrow maze and greg gillespie stuff or just it's just a random name that sounded cool i don't know why would anybody actually want to live in bog town it's a town on a bog what were we thinking well, that explains why the land was cheap. Uh, from Limitless Adventures, we have North Africa, Mystery in the Sahara, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition softcover supplement. This is a World War II type campaign using pre-generated characters uh, dealing with uh, uh, World War II mysteries and desert stuff set, I guess, in the Sahara Adventures, but using the 5E engine. Hmm, so hopefully they're going to show in this game how you can convert 5e to a World War II type game. We'll see. Um, from Hurtleberry Press, we have Gig Economy for the OSR. This is a $10 zine, and inside it are 200 weird and fun and quirky things to add to your uh, OSR game, including things like NPCs, hirelings, town folks, lackeys, minions, steves, those kind of things. So if you're looking for a uh, source book of a whole sorts of new potential NPCs for your player characters to meet and abuse, you can pick this up. It's only $10, and it's for the OSR. From Crucible 7, we have the Doctor Who role-playing game 2nd edition and the Doctor Who role-playing game collector's edition. It's uh, $50 for the normal game and $100 for the collector's edition. This is not the 5e version, but this is the Crucible 7 original version featuring uh, the current incarnation of the Doctor on the cover, the one who has gotten so much negative press. Uh, yeah, and she wasn't my favorite Doctor either, but whatever. I know some people liked her. So it's all sorts of stuff for the Doctor Who role-playing game. So if you've ever wanted to play a Doctor Who role-playing game uh, and use the original system it was designed for, well, one of the many, check this out. $50 for the standard book, $100 for the special edition. Don't, don't be surprised by the cost of the special edition one. Special edition ones are going to be the future of di physical print game stuff. Um, I don't know, you know, unless everybody is a Time Lord or everybody's a companion and the Time Lord's an NPC, I don't know how a Doctor Who role-playing game works because you've got the Time Lord and then you've got everybody else. And if one person's playing a Time Lord and everybody else is just playing the standard, you know, companions... That's like having a 10th level character running around with a 1st level character. The best way to do a Doctor Who campaign, I think, is just to have all companions, no Time Lord, and they find a TARDIS. And then they just go off on adventures. Basically, Spelljammer. Uh, from BRW Games, we have Toil and Trouble. This is an adventure module for the OSR, specifically Adventures Dark and Deep and Castles and Crusades. Uh, it's a adventure about werewolves in the OSR. Uh, so if you want to get a ten, a six dollar OSR adventure about werewolves, there's this. From Cloven Pine Games, we have for Powered by the Apocalypse, back again from the Broken Land and the Great Soul Train robbery. 
These are two soft cover rule books running about $20 each. Uh, back from the Broken Lands are a game about adventurers sharing stories on a long walk. Um, played in only three sessions. So if you're looking for a short, bittersweet game about the walk home, you know, like if you wanted to role play the end of The Hobbit when everybody went home and they were just like talking and reminiscing about the adventure and, you know, the adventure will, uh, well, all the excitement is over now. What am I going to do? Uh, yeah, but you can play it in three sessions and then you never have to play it again. Hmm. We also have the Great Soul Train Robbery where you play uh, a weird West group of desperados robbing a train. But in the weird Western twist, this is a train actually going to hell. Uh, a common uh, urban myth of the Old West was when the trains were first being discovered that there were ghost trains. Uh, we've heard this before. Uh, at least uh, some of us have. It's a you know it's one of the stories that came out of the Old West um, about the story and the you know beginning of the the train age and the stories of like ghost trains. So yeah, you play a bunch of bandits trying to rob a train, but uh oh, it's a train to hell. Hmm. For from Carduck Games, we have Foundlings using a new D10 system. Ten dollars. You are anthropomorphic creatures living on the fringes of a polluted forest at the edge of the ruins of a once great civilization. Where you play anthropomorphic creatures like you know anthropomorphic bears, anthropomorphic monkeys, anthropomorphic owls, trying to eke out a life in a post-apocalypse world uh, of salvage and wonder. So it's a post-apocalypse game, but instead of playing humans, you're playing anthropomorphic sheep. Eh. From John Abrams for Powered by the Apocalypse, we have Noir World. This is a $40 collective experience where everyone acts and directs as part of a movie. The group creates over 20 roles to play, uh, where you play a whole bunch of stories, I guess, in a film noir movie. So you're playing people who are writing the movie, but you're also playing the characters in the movie. And this is all about relationships and crime and danger set in a film noir world using Powered by the Apocalypse. $40. From Adams Media, we have the Ultimate RPG Character Backstory Guide. This is a soft cover supplement for $16. Helps you build an existing character, create a new one with activities that provide plenty of RPG support for fantasy. So for all those people who want to do 10 page backstories for their characters that, you know, never really matter, here's a book to help you do it. Personally, if your backstory is longer than two paragraphs or two sentences even, uh, you're wasting my time. Yeah. You should not be worried so much worried about backstory. Even Gygax said, don't worry about backstory. Worry about forward story. Worry about the character's forward story, the life they're going to make from the point of creation on and the stories they're going to take. The backstory should just be a few words, a few key um, things to sort of give you a general direction of what the character did before they started adventuring, what happened to the character before they started adventuring, but everything else should be telling the story about the character going forward. Yeah, if you need a whole book that's $16, yeah, that's that's my no for the day. That's my no. Yeah, that's just, yeah, you know what? Just take a creative writing class. Um, so, yeah, no film noir, no anthropomorphic animals. It's been done. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Nothing really stands out this week. Um, but there you go. If any of these products sound like, yeah, God, I do need a haircut. Look at this, right? Just my hair never wants to be what it wants to be. If any of these sound like something you want to get, just contact your local game store and make sure they have it in stock or can order it for you and let them know the OGGM sent you. It won't get you anything, but at least you can tell them you know me, which might be a good thing. No, wait, it's me, baby. You better not tell them you know me. Hindsight. Subscribe to my vlog and have a great day. I will talk to you later. See ya.